when a police dog alerted customs officers to a shipping container. They had no idea what they were walking into. But when the door blew open with an ungodly stench, it was immediately clear that something terrible had happened here. Patrolling the ports of Shenzhen, China, a police dog could never comprehend the importance of his job. Of course, his handlers knew that his job was crucial for keeping contraband, weapons, and crime out of the country. But the small police dog naively bounced around, happy to sniff out things in exchange for treats. To him, it was just another day. On this day, though, even the police canine would sense that something was terribly amiss. It began when officers were investigating shipping containers. That didn't have the right papers. This happened from time to time. But they had more than 15 to get through. Meaning that they wouldn't have time to open up and inspect each one. That's what the smugglers relied on. But if they knew what they were up against. They would have reconsidered attempting to ship anything illicit in the first place. Three men radioed into headquarters. Announcing that they were already en route. Heading to the first container to investigate. Their black dress shoes clipped on the concrete below in unison. This was an anti-smuggling team. And everything about them was professional. Down to the walk. They had busted dozens of contraband importations in the last week alone. The first three containers they inspected were innocent. One was filled with toys and another with phone cases. The shippers must have made honest mistakes in the paperwork. Which was a routine occurrence at one of the biggest ports in China. Each of these containers, as one of the customs officials had predicted, was safe. The fourth container, however, would prove to take up the entire rest of the day. And continue to occupy investigators' time for several months to come. By the end of it, a global news story would have broken. Dragging in the customs officials and an international crime syndicate. The officials approached the container and checked the paperwork. Number 5702, its place of origin. Was listed as three different ports, with one of them crossed out. Under certain circumstances, this would raise the investigator's suspicions. But everything else seemed to be in order. And the outside of the container seemed fairly new. In their experience. Smugglers tended to put their goods in well-worn-out containers. To fly under the radar of inspectors. One official made the signal that he didn't suspect anything. And with many containers still to go through. The other men were happy to move on to the next one. But that's when the police dog slumped into a sitting position. Fixing itself to a spot directly in front of the container. The official who had already been walking away was jerked back towards the container by the dog. Exasperated, he demanded to know what the dog was playing at. They didn't have time to waste, it was time to move on. He told the dog. But the canine refused to move. It was anchored to the spot, with its tongue out. Looking intently at the container. The other men turned back to the container. And were shocked to see that the canine had picked up on something. The act of sitting down served as the distinct signal that the trained dog had successfully detected and recognized the specific odors it had been trained to identify. Something was hidden in the container. It was still unclear exactly what he had found. Police dogs were not perfect. And it wasn't uncommon for them to give false positives. When a strong scent of food or meat pervaded an area. It must have been something, though. Reluctantly. The customs official retrieved a pair of bolt cutters from his bag. If it was going to satisfy the dog. Then he'd open it up, but he didn't expect to find anything. The rusty red doors wobbled and buckled as the man pried them. Tilting and jimmying for more leverage. Before eventually the lock snapped with a loud creaking noise. The doors slowly swung open peering into the container and pointing with their flashlights. The men were confronted by piles of bags striped and puffy but incredibly light material. 
Opening one up with a knife was a routine inspection. And it revealed thousands of pieces of wavy dried cold-like material. Touching it left a dark black stain on the skin. As though it were charcoal. But just as the bag had been sliced open. An awful stench barreled out of the container. Almost knocking one of the officers to the floor. They coughed and spluttered. Holding their arms up to their faces. Waving back the smell. It seeped up through their noses and blocked the airways. Even the police dog was caught by surprise. His senses overwhelmed, throwing him off his focus momentarily. Something dark and mysterious was inside this container. And these officers were going to get to the bottom of it. Following protocol, they called in health inspectors to assist them. In case they were dealing with some kind of hazardous material. Within a couple of hours, the area had been cordoned off with police tape. And a serious investigation was underway. The smell was unlike anything they had ever experienced. They didn't know it yet. But this was the first step of a historical investigation. They had confiscated prohibited items in the past. But never on such a large scale. However, this was not just any illegal item, it was different. It was an animal. And its journey had begun more than 7,000 miles away. Two weeks earlier, in a dense forest in Africa. A man was in hot pursuit of his ticket out of poverty. With the help of his pet dog. This man was chasing a creature that had eluded him for days. But he knew that he was edging closer to its habitat. He was following a trail of signs. From tree bark stripped off of trees to claw marks in the nests of ants. These were the clues to exactly what he was looking for. And he wasn't about to let up. Sensing the animal closer than he ever had. Sweat beating down his forehead and drawing short of breath. That's when he spotted it, a small tail disappearing underground. Even from the brief flash of its rear end. He knew this was what he had been looking for. Spending the next few hours setting up traps. The man then retreated to a campsite and waited until morning. Barely sleeping with anticipation. To his delight, his trap had captured five victims. Moving up closer to the net. He could now get a good look at what he had for so long pursued. Although the animals were curled into balls. Trying to protect themselves. He could identify their tails spanning the size of their bodies seemingly blending into their backs which provided thick and rounded guards arching back down to their heads their claws were tiny even smaller than a cat's but covering the surface of their skin was their most valuable part their scales rocky prickly and shaped like a pine cone this was the sole reason that these animals were so sought after. Having captured a group of them. This man would sell them to a local dealer. He was only a tiny player in a game. That involved thousands of poachers spread across Africa. But even this small amount was lucrative enough to. Provide a month's worth of wages back home. He knew what would happen next. These animals would be killed. Their scales removed and put into piles where they would eventually make their way to the border of China in giant shipping containers waiting to be released only to be met by customs officials who with the help of their police dog had intercepted this particular load announced at a press conference a week later the police revealed that this was a historic moment for the country and although it wasn't printed in the newspapers the team gave the credit to their trusted canine, who had played a vital role in the bust. The media were not interested in that, instead. The world was captured by what exactly the group had found inside the container. To the shock of everyone, it was revealed that the customs officials of Shenzhen had seized thousands upon thousands of pangolin scales a species which had risen to become the most trafficked animal in the world. Despite being highly illegal all over the world. Because of its endangered status under both national and international laws. 
all eight species of pangolins are granted protection. With two of them being classified as critically endangered on the IUCN Red List of Threatened Species. In China, pangolins receive state protection due to their status as a protected species. And consuming pangolins is a serious offense punishable by up to 10 years of imprisonment. Despite their lack of scientific evidence supporting their medicinal value, pangolin scales have been extensively utilized in Chinese traditional medicine for various purposes, including treating asthma, fertility issues, cancer, blood clots, and aiding lactation. This has led to a significant increase in demand for pangolin scales, particularly in the past two decades. However, the absence of concrete scientific findings raises questions about the effectiveness of these traditional practices. Because of these high demands, traffickers were becoming more brazen with their tactics, bribing officials and operating in broad daylight. Pangolin syndicates were creating some of the most powerful criminals in the country. It wasn't unheard of to seize large quantities of pangolin scales, but port officials had never seen anything close to this staggering amount. When weighed, this batch of 293 bags totaled almost 12 tons, meaning that they had come from 20,000 to 30,000 pangolins. That means the poachers responsible for sending the shipping container might be single-handedly making the animal extinct. The container seizure marked a turning point, providing just what the authorities needed to push forward their investigation. A customs unit had been closing in on a trafficking syndicate that stretched from Africa and ended in China, where it found most of its customers. Much of the illegal pangolin trade operations start in Africa where four of the eight species are found. However, the true masterminds in this particular case were calling the shots from somewhere in China. Now, the customs team had a serious investigation on their hands. That would take months to unravel. It would later be revealed that this crime syndicate had operated for a long time with impunity, getting away with blatant crimes and accumulating massive amounts of money. This latest container was estimated to be worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. This was a lot of money, but not worth the mass killing of nearly 30,000 pangolins. Regrettably, the investigators assigned to the case of the shipping crate faced significant challenges in their pursuit of the criminals responsible for the horrific mass killing. Their resources were limited, leaving them with meager leads to identify the culprits. The only available information were fake names noted on the shipping forms. With just this little amount of evidence, their hopes rested primarily on the label attached to the shipping crate. Determined to crack the case, they sought the support of a specialized team dedicated to dismantling smuggling operations. Expert analysis confirmed that the pangolin scales originated from Africa, providing a crucial clue. By cross-referencing the name on the shipment with its associated location, the investigators managed to narrow down the pool of potential suspects. Initially, the list was teeming with dozens of names, prompting the investigators to painstakingly examine each one. They pored over hundreds of documents conducted numerous field visits, and gradually eliminated many possible suspects from their investigation. Countless hours were dedicated to the relentless pursuit of apprehending those responsible. After considerable effort, the team eventually apprehended two individuals, he and Lee, who emerged as prime suspects. This breakthrough marked a significant triumph for the investigators as it brought them one step closer to safeguarding pangolins. However, Lee, a seasoned smuggler who had skillfully managed to evade capture for years, adamantly denied any involvement with the scales, even in the face of incriminating photographs discovered on his cell phone. He claimed that the phone had been acquired secondhand, 
insinuating that the images predated his ownership. The investigators almost had him, as all their evidence pointed to him, but they still couldn't arrest him. The investigators found themselves in a challenging position. Concerning Lee's alibi. If he could prove that he had purchased the phone from a previous owner, it would be arduous to hold him in custody. Without additional evidence linking him directly to the crime. Nonetheless, driven by their extensive progress and near certainty of Lee's guilt, the investigators remained resolute. They were determined not to give up easily. Fortunately, Lee unwittingly left a crucial clue in one of the scale photographs. In addition to capturing the scales, the image unintentionally revealed his foot adorned with a distinct mole. By conducting a meticulous comparison between the foot in the photograph and Lee's actual foot, the investigators obtained the conclusive evidence. They desperately needed to charge him. In this instance, they truly were one step ahead of the criminal. Further investigation exposed the long-standing partnership between Lee and he, who had collaborated on numerous lucrative business deals, amassing an astounding sum of $758,000. Other evidence also showed that both criminals had taken the same flight right to the African country from where the Pangolin scales had come. Lee primarily handled the shipping operations from Africa to China, while he focused on sales and ensuring customer satisfaction in China. Following their arrest, the authorities promptly reported the criminals and their crimes to the General Administration of Customs. However, the full extent of involvement by other smugglers and criminals remained unknown. Lee and he may have been just two key players among a potential network comprising hundreds of individuals. The investigators were acutely aware that their work had only scratched the surface of a much larger criminal enterprise to safeguard pangolins and dismantle the entire operation. Their diligent efforts would need to continue by persistently pursuing justice. They aspired to unveil the intricate network of criminals involved ensuring that all responsible parties face the consequences of their actions. The investigation not only aimed to bring the perpetrators to justice, but also served as a potential reminder of the urgent need for concerted efforts to combat illegal wildlife trade and protect endangered species worldwide. As the investigators delved deeper into the case, it became evident that Lee and he were not operating in isolation. Their partnership was just a piece of a larger puzzle involving a network of criminals and smugglers. The scope and scale of their illicit activities hinted at the possibility of numerous other individuals involved in the illegal trade. Later, a verdict delivered by the Intermediate People's Court in Wenzhou, a city in eastern China, resulted in the imprisonment of 17 individuals involved in Another illicit smuggling of pangolin scales. These members of a notorious gang were found guilty of illegally importing a staggering 23 tons of pangolin scales valued at 180 million won, $28 million, from Nigeria between 2018 and 2019. According to the court statement, the court identified two men as the masterminds orchestrating this extensive criminal operation sentencing them to prison terms ranging from 13 to 14 years. The remaining members of the gang received varying jail sentences, spanning from 15 months to 12 years, reflecting the different degrees of their involvement in the smuggling activities. This smuggling operation employed various deceptive methods, with the court specifically mentioning the use of a consignment concealed within ginger slices, this revelation sheds light on the crafty techniques employed by these criminals to evade detection and transport the illicit goods across borders. In a significant move to protect wildlife, China has already taken decisive action by removing pangolin body parts from its official list of traditional medicines. 
The country also elevated the protective status of pangolins to its highest level. Acknowledging the critical need to safeguard these endangered creatures, whose population continues to dwindle. These ongoing efforts by China underscore its commitment to combating wildlife crime, preserving biodiversity, and promoting the responsible and sustainable use of natural resources. By enforcing strict legal measures and imposing severe penalties on offenders, the country aims to safeguard endangered species, uphold international conservation commitments, and contribute to the global fight against illegal wildlife trade. With the hope that individuals involved in the illegal pangolin trade take note of the consequences faced by individuals like Lee and He, there is a chance that they will reconsider their involvement in this harmful industry. While significant efforts are underway to protect this unique species, it remains evident that further action is required to ensure the long-term safety of pangolins. Recognizing the urgency of the situation, the International Fund for Animal Welfare issued a statement emphasizing the need for additional measures to prevent the pangolin population from facing extinction within our lifetime. These words underscore the importance of collective efforts and highlight the imperative of implementing robust conservation strategies. It is clear that the fate of pangolins hangs in the balance, demanding continued commitment and decisive action from worldwide governments, organizations, and individuals alike. Only through comprehensive efforts, including increased awareness, strengthened legislation, enhanced enforcement, and sustainable practices. Can we hope to secure a future where pangolins thrive and their survival is assured? Dogs are the most loyal friends of humans. They can bring full love to their owners when humans are sad and sad. At the same time, as a member of the family, their identity is also extremely important. If they lose a dog, they lose their laughter and the right to be accompanied. They can also make their owners feel very bad. And even have trouble sleeping and eating. Mary and Brent are a couple who have a cute puppy. With snow white fur and a furry tail. They are very cute, but because of this. Both husband and wife dote on the dog. And even for their behavior, the dog is really spoiled. On a bleak autumn afternoon. The dog played alone in the backyard of the house. But as soon as it left, it never came back. The couple suspected that the dog had lost itself. So they were very anxious and immediately went out to find the dog. Unfortunately. After three days and three nights of searching. There was no news, and they fell into extreme sadness. Since the dog left the house. The house has become very empty leaving an indescribable void for the couple. Anyone who has experienced it knows how painful it feels to lose a pet. But they have not given up. They still work hard every day to distribute leaflets and seek help from local residents and the police. As the search continues, they gradually become very tired and even begin to lose hope of finding the dog. However, as more and more people participated in the search, a man said that the dog had been seen in a place. They immediately became ecstatic and drove ahead to the destination. Finally, the effort did not disappoint the person who intended. The couple were lucky to see the dog that had been separated from them for a long time. Unexpectedly, after such a long time, the dog recognized its owner at a glance, wagging its tail excitedly, and ran towards the couple. The eyes were filled with joy. When the owner saw the excited reaction of the dog, he immediately ran over and hugged his beloved dog, constantly stroking his furry head with his hands. Tears had already crossed their cheeks and fell on the dog, which seemed to feel the owner's mood. He kept shouting, as if comforting his master. The reunion scene was very touching. Such a satisfactory result is also the best consolation. There is also a story that can better reflect the dog's deep love. 
and yearning for its owner. A young man raised a cute puppy and took good care of it. It took a long time for the dog and people to stay close to each other. Unfortunately, the puppy that had accompanied him suddenly disappeared. Only six years ago, he finally reunited with his missing dog. This was one of the most exciting moments of his life. One afternoon. The young man was driving to work when, he suddenly saw a dog in the distance. The dog looked very similar to the one he had lost. He looked in and saw that it was indeed his own dog. But there was another young man standing beside it. It seemed that the dog had a new owner. He immediately stopped and called for the dog's name. Unexpectedly, the dog immediately responded. The man was ecstatic. After such a long time, the dog even recognized his voice and couldn't help but get excited. The dog excitedly wagged its tail at the man. His eyes filled with uncontrollable joy, but his new owner pulled at him. Holding the leash in his hand, slightly controlling the dog's emotions. The man stood up and explained in detail the cause. An effect of the dog's loss. After learning everything, the new owner was unwilling to let the dog leave him. He begged his former owner not to take the dog away. After so many days, he has long regarded this cute dog as his family. And without its companionship, he would definitely become very lonely. After negotiation, they decided to take turns taking care of the dog. So that they could not only get the companionship of the dog, but also not let any of them become lonely and helpless. Due to the loss of their pets, dogs occupy an undeniable position in human life. From the moment they are born, they have steadfastly defended their owners, and assumed the mission of protecting them. The love of dogs is always loyal. So people must take good care of dogs and never fail to live up to their sincere hearts.